Okay, so we're back. Um, in this series of videos, what I want to talk about is taking the backpropagation algorithm uh, and converting it to work in a vectorized manner. Um, the ultimate goal is going to be to develop a backpropagation network in Python, which will work off of NumPy and just basically use matrix operations uh, and vector operations to do as much as efficiently as possible. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is go through how to implement both forward propagation of information through the network and back propagation, uh, the implementation of the algorithm uh, in a vectorized form. So here we go. Okay, so first let's just look at the forward pass. This is just supplying the network with information and trying to compute the output. I will, by the way, assume that you're familiar with how this all works. If you really want to dig into the nitty gritty details of figuring out the algorithm uh, in, in explicit detail, uh, that's in a separate video series that's already posted. This is more for people that already know that, uh, that want to just do something quick and efficient, um, eventually in Python, but just uh, in a linear algebra type way. So anyway, okay. Uh, the forward pass. So let's just look at um, the input to a single node from the previous layer and consider this one step at a time. So I'm looking at the input to this node here, I'll denote it with X, um, and I have the output of the previous layer's nodes uh, here with uh, O sub 1, O sub 2, O sub 3 connected by weights to the input X by the weights from 1 to 1, the weights from 2 to 1, and the weight from 3 to 1. Now. Uh, well, that's what I just said. Let the input to neuron 1 be denoted by x. This is the first neuron. I guess I should have called it something better. Um, clearly, we can just write down exactly what this is. If I want to figure out the input to this neuron, um, I can write down the output times the weight, plus the output times this weight, plus this output times this weight, add them all up, and I get that expression right there, x, which is the input to this neuron. Uh, not exactly. So what we're missing is the bias term. Now the bias term is important, uh, but in this example, there's only three neurons in this layer. So how do I sort of make this work in, in this sort of format? Well, uh, we cheat a little bit. The first thing to notice is that I'm just adding this theta and that's it. And that's the same as one times some number theta. So what I'm going to do is where I would normally have an output, I will artificially create another special kind of node called a bias node whose job it is uh, to sit there and output one all the time. And then this number theta will then just become the weight that connects this output that is always one to this uh, neuron X, right? This first guy. Um, and then that'll be it. So let's go ahead and add the bias node to the previous layer um, and change the symbol that links it from theta to the weight that now connects the fourth node to the first node. And there it is. So uh, I've drawn it differently because, you know, if this, if this layer on the left-hand side was an input layer, you wouldn't actually supply four inputs. You would be supplying three of them. Uh, and it's going to be our job when we pass this information forward if we're going to include bias to tack on this one extra node to each layer that just sits there and outputs one all the time. Uh, and then we just simply add this weight that connects it and you're good to go. Okay, so now we can actually write down the formula for the input to that first neuron. So X, which is this input here, is the product of the output from the previous layer times the weight that links it to this layer. Now this uh, is the first three that we already had, plus one, which is invisible here, times the weight from four to one. And clearly, weight for one is just our bias now. Okay, now, hopefully, obviously, uh, this expression, we can just write this as a matrix product. So the row, well, okay, sorry. So it's a product of two matrices. The first matrix is the matrix of weights that link all of the neurons in the first layer to this particular neuron in the second layer. 
So that is the just the list of weights in order. The weight uh, from 1 to 1, the weight from 2 to 1, the weight from 3 to 1, the weight from 4 to 1, multiplied by the column vector, this matrix, uh, which is 4 by 1, of the outputs from this layer. Now the outputs are the three actual outputs, script 01 through script 03, plus the one bias neuron that I've added here, uh, right there. Now if you do this all out, this will be this first row times this first column. You get a one by one matrix, which is exactly this expression. And that's it. So once you've computed the input, oh, sorry, I do something a little different first. Um, let's talk about uh, the second node here, which I've called Y. How is this going to be different from this node X? Well, there's a different set of weights that connect it. Instead of going from one to one, they go from one to two, and two to two, and three to two, and four to two, right? Uh, but other than that, it's about the same. They're all multiplied by this same set of outputs, script 01, script 02, script 03, and the one bias neuron. Now, obviously, I'm just gonna take this Y expression and turn it into a matrix product, just like I did here, um, except now we have a different set of weights. Instead of 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, we have 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2. Uh, but they are multiplied by the exact same output vector. And by output vector, I mean the output of the previous layer. Um, and this is really convenient. So why don't I just build a vector that is the vector of outputs from the second layer. And that will have the first row equal to x, the second row equal to y. And then I can just write this down as a single matrix, which has all of the weights with all of the connections between all of the nodes in the first layer and all of the nodes in the second layer, multiplied by the single matrix, which is the list of output values from the first layer. And that's it. Um, obviously this just becomes a big matrix. This is a single column vector and you just call your linear algebra system and it'll just do it for you. And it really actually can be pretty quick. So what that means is to determine the inputs to the neurons in the second layer here, uh, we just have to take a matrix product where the matrix is the matrix of weights connecting them um, with the vector of outputs uh, that we're inputting into this second layer, if that makes any sense. Now, once we've determined X and Y, which remember are the input values uh, to this layer, when I want to determine the output of this layer, I simply go element by element and apply our transfer function, which again, I'll just denote with sigma, okay? So once you've done this matrix product, you get your new column vector, apply sigma to every element. That is now the output vector for the next layer. And you'll add a little bias neuron here, et cetera, et cetera. And that's it, you just pass the information forward. Now, um, what I've been doing here, and this is completely explicit in this page, um, is been talking about a single example. Now, this is totally fine when you have just a particular example and I wanna know the output from the network when I give it this input, that's fine. I give it a single column vector that is my input, I pass it into the network, and I get a single column vector of output, right? This sort of summarizes everything that we just talked about. Um, if you have a previous layer with M nodes, we create an M plus one by one matrix, uh, right? This is the actual output, all of the O's, and then one for our bias term. It's linked to the upcoming layer, let's say that has N nodes by a matrix that is N by M plus one, uh, which is just the matrix of all the weights, okay? So you take the matrix product, W times O, you apply sigma to every element, which is now a column vector, um, and you get the output, and you just pass that forward. Very, very easy. Now, what if I want to have the network look at multiple examples at once? And let's just say a scenario for this might be training the network. Maybe instead of having to do a bunch of iterative loops through a bunch of different inputs and getting an output and then 
you know, figuring out the deltas and doing all that junk. Maybe we could do it all in one pass. Uh, it turns out because of the way linear algebra all works out, we totally can. So let's just suppose that we had a couple of input vectors. And I'm sorry, this isn't necessarily an input vector. This is just an observation about matrix multiplication. This is something you need to recall that will make this obvious that this works. So suppose we're given a pair of column vectors, V1 and V2, which I've written here in red and blue, um, and a matrix of weights, which I would normally just take the weight times one of the vectors. Oh, that's really hideous and hard to read. Um, but in this case, what I'm going to do is take both of the vectors and build a new matrix where each column is each of the different inputs, right? So this between the parentheses is a single matrix uh, where each column is each input that I want to present to the network. Um, so if you have a matrix built this way and you multiply it by another matrix W, then the thing to note is that the result comes out just like this. You get a new matrix which has the first column the same as um, weight times first vector. The second column is weight matrix W times second vector. So I've only shown it for two here. Obviously this could be the entire data set. It could be a subset of the data set of the training data. Uh, it could be anything. And one of the things that's really nice about this is we can do, well, for one, we can do the training almost all at once. I can pres present the network the entire data set, run it once, and get the output of the network for every different uh, piece of information I passed into it, which is pretty slick. The other reason I want to do this is because linear algebra systems are designed to work with big matrices in a very efficient way. They're easy to paralyze, parallelize and uh, and this is actually going to be a huge time saver by just building one big matrix and letting it do the whole thing all at once. Okay? Um, so that's about it. That's all you're going to really need to know to know how to do the forward pass. Uh, when we write it in Python later it's going to be it's really not that much. It's you know a handful of lines of code. It's some matrix multiplication and and stuff like that and that's it. You you have a functioning network. Now training it is a separate uh, ordeal, so we'll go through that next in the next video. Okay, later.